I'm Wasteland Firebird, and today we are at the Harry's of Liverpool monthly car meet. I think that might be the new Subaru BRZ in front of us, but I can't tell because it just looks like any regular car now. We're going to Harry's of Liverpool. It's an old-timey kind of hot dog stand, or at least it's a hot dog restaurant that has a bit of an old-timey feel to it, like an old-timey diner. The human brain is a thing called negativity bias. We focus on the bad stuff so that threats don't get the better of us. It's negativity bias that made it easy for Howard Zinn to catalog all the things that the USA did wrong. He wrote a book called The People's History of the United States, and I read the book, and, and he's right. I, I get it. But I'll bet you a hundred bucks you don't know who Norman Borlaug is. Norman Borlaug was an American who saved a billion lives. He invented new strains of wheat that fed the planet and saved billions of people from starvation. A billion lives. If positivity bias were a thing, we'd all be wearing t-shirts with pictures of Norman Borlaug on them. There's a hot dog stand called Tail of the Pup. They employed a thing called programmatic architecture. Now, programmatic architecture was a thing they used to do back in the middle of the 20th century where they make the building look like the thing that they're selling at the building. So if you put a giant donut on the top of your building, that means you're selling donuts. Well, Tail of the Pup is a hot dog stand that looks like a hot dog. I was watching TV shows from the 70s and it kept popping up. Like I think it was in the Rockford Files. I think it was in Starsky and Hutch. It, it's been in the movie LA Story. It's just this piece of 20th century Americana and I fell in love with it so I researched it and it was gone when I when I did the research it was a couple years ago and it didn't exist anymore and that was really sad but there was talk of reviving it and starting it up again and now it has been started up again you can actually go there and get hot dogs and next month we're gonna go there and we're gonna get hot dogs from Tale of the Pup and so I can't wait to get hot dogs from a hot dog stand that's in the shape of a hot dog I think there is a Sandman over there. It's not a Sandman specifically, but it's definitely in the style of the Sandman. So there's a lifted Jimny here. It has a retro Suzuki badge on it. It doesn't have the S one on it. You can get some even more retro looking ones in this kind of like, very like art deco kind of a script too. But yeah, it looks, it looks much better than the S badge. I really thought about getting one, but I bought this camera instead. Toyota Celica from the 70s, it looks like. They look like miniature muscle cars. I always love these things. You don't see a lot of these things anymore. You never see them in this condition. It looks like a muscle car at two thirds the size. BMW 3 Series, historical and it's highly respected, sporty, lightweight, great handling car. It's just that in the 80s, if you owned one, you were a jerk. An old, old Datsun pickup. In the US, we did not have any four-door pickups back in the 70s. Now, all pickup trucks in the US have four doors. Oh, look at this. Look at, oh, it's like a piece of surfing history. It's a woody, it's a wood-sided Holden with wooden surfboards on top. I think that's real wood and everything. Okay, well, this wins the car show for me. But, so you can see that some of this is painted. Or maybe a lot of it, maybe this is all painted, actually. It looks maybe like it's all painted to look like a woody. I don't know, maybe I might have to revoke my award. It might not be the number one car here. But I think it needs some sort of award because the, the detail in the paintwork is just astonishing. That they spent so much time trying to make this paint look like wood that they had me fooled for the first 30 seconds that I was looking at it. Chevelle. It doesn't matter. It's like these are the most. They're at every every car show has these. I love the smell of exhaust in the evening. Yes. 
Now we gotta get some hot dogs. Speaking of hot dogs, they pointed out in my last video that I was not eating a sausage roll. I was eating a sausage on a roll, which is distinct from a sausage roll. I know. Like I know. That's why I get so excited. That's why we make a video. It's like I'm just like I, I've never seen this car before. I've never seen this car before. Yeah. I like your okay. Thanks. <laughs> Harry's Cafe de Wheels has real neon signs. Real neon signs are a dying breed. They're going extinct. And a chocolate malt milkshake. Have I seen you on YouTube? Have I seen you on YouTube? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're here for the we're here for the car show. Yeah. Yep. Right. If you want a milkshake in Australia, you have to ask for a thick shake. I have gotten a thin shake, which is not really a milkshake. It's more like a chocolate milk. This hot dog has smashed up peas on it. Smushed up peas. I'm gonna take a bite out of it or what? I, I want you to say thanks to Matt Skelly and I'll wet this wave and then I'm gonna... Thanks to Matt Skelly. Thanks to Matt Skelly for the camera work. Matt Skelly! Thanks to Matt Skelly for the camera work! More cars are showing up. Noisy cars. Better not be hooning over there. I think it's a Ford panel van down there. One yours? Yeah, mine. Yeah. Is it based on the Escort or the Falcon? Falcon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because they, they did. Smaller. They did have an Escort one too, though, right? Yeah. 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 And it, this wasn't the Sundowner, though, I assume, right? This is the same model as the Sundowner. It's yeah, the yeah, same it's model, but that it didn't have this. This one, yours didn't have this, nah. the stripe package, is what you're saying? Okay. Because yeah, like I love the stripe package on the Sundowner. Right? So I really like these things. Super cool. Yeah. Ford Falcon panel van. That's not a Sundowner, but it's still really cool. Here's a Mitsubishi that I've never seen before. Mitsubishi Sigma SE. Never seen one of these. I, I don't know what it is. I like the wheels. An American pickup truck nowadays, seriously, the hood will be up here. And the cab will be up here. And the bed will be up here too. My car's are small enough that they can hide behind the bed of modern American pickup trucks. So when I'm walking in a parking lot in the USA and I, I walk towards my car, I say, where's my car? It's missing, but it'll be hiding behind the bed of just a pickup truck. Mazda RX-7 from the 90s. The golden age of Japanese sports cars was the 90s and we didn't even know it at the time. These things are increasing in value all the time now. There will never be a time like that again. Cars were simple, they were lightweight, there were no computers, but they handled great and they were fast and they were reliable too. What else do you need? Toyota Supra. These skyrocketed in value in the past 30 years. Proper oral hygiene is important. You're supposed to brush your teeth up here. Why are you shooting? It's a Mustang. It's a Mustang. It's not interesting. So that was Harry's Cafe de Wheels monthly car meet. There were people that were born before a car was invented, and then they invented cars, and then they invented airplanes, and then they invented rockets, and they flew to the moon, and that was all within a person's lifetime. My grandfather was one of the people who believed that the moon landing was faked. And it was because he had lived through all of that. He had lived through the non-existence of cars, and the non-existence of airplanes, and the non-existence of rockets to the moon. And his brain could only comprehend so much of a distance from not having cars, just riding around on horses, to walking on the moon. And his brain just said, there's no way that's possible. But it was possible. It happened in the 20th century. And even if we go to Mars, I don't think that's gonna be as big of a deal as when we invented cars, invented airplanes, and went to the moon, and suddenly everybody had indoor plumbing and air conditioning, and great medical care and antibiotics and vaccines and declining 
extreme poverty rates and massively declining infant mortality and lifespans drastically increasing, that's never going to happen again. There never will be another century like the 20th. My Toyota 86 goes 145. I lost my license, now I don't drive. Do, 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 do. Norman Borlaug saved a billion lives. He should get to kill one person. Just anyone he wants, for any reason he wants. He should just get to kill one person because he saved a billion other people. Well, so now that we know what negativity bias is, we realize how important it is to cultivate a positivity bias. And I'm not saying even that you have to become an optimist. I'm saying to become a realist. You have to counteract your negativity bias by cultivating a positivity bias so they can cancel each other out. And I don't think it would hurt if you cultivated a little bit more of a positivity bias. So you started to see the best in things and the best in people, and if you started assuming the best motives for the people around you, I don't think that would be such a bad thing. I'm Wasteland Firebird. Thank you for inviting me into your home or onto your digital device. Have a good night.